Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being your show, we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Riverdale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, it does seem like we are getting a... First of all, it's like... These are depressing stories. Like, there's some silver linings to some, uh, but I think all these stories are going to... I mean, they're, like, horror-themed and inspired. I almost think, like, Riverdale can get weird, but I don't think they can get as weird as the Archie comics get. Because the Archie comics, you can just kind of be, like, anything from horror stories to the murder mystery element that Riverdale's had in the past and kind of has, continues to have. Plus, also superhero stuff, because the Archie comics have stretched every genre. So I guess this is almost their way of being like, oh, let's kind of make a mini, like, Riverdale horror series, I guess, you know, kind of, well, I mean, I guess the argument could be like, well... Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is that, but, like, that's specifically designed to be horror. You know, Riverdale, it, 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 Archie Comics can lend itself anyway in any direction. Well, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina shows that. But regardless, uh, our new story in Rivervale are ghost stories. First and foremost, like, kind of our, I guess, main overarching story is everything with uh, that brawl between the serpents and the ghoulies. Basically, it was like a Romeo and Juliet thing that led to blood being spilled between the two sides. And Darla's son, or her last son, Danny, got killed by Tony. Tony wasn't trying to kill him, just stop him. But also, like, her therapist was saying, like, why, why don't you try and apologize to Darla? It's like, how do you apologize to someone for taking away their child? She's like, I know I'd be devastated if anything ever happened to baby Tony. And that be, ends up being the main through line. Because in this episode, La Llorona. I, I, I want to say Llorona, but it's Llorona. Uh, I'm still, I'm sure my uh, pronunciation is still abysmal at best. Uh, but um, I was like, didn't they do this? recently wasn't one of the paranormal activity movies based like la llorona i feel like in the past like year or two wasn't it like 2019 or something it came out there was something and maybe i'm maybe i'm misremembering but i think it's like a la llorona movie already exists i was like oh that's interesting but basically she's the weeping woman as they would call her and basically we find out later on her story is her name was martha and she was drowned along with her children because people believed her to be a witch woman which i'm sure there are parallels to like what happened to uh, Cheryl's ancestor that made her feel some kind of... I'm surprised that didn't become a bigger plot point of, like, there's some kinship between, like, what happened to Martha and her children versus, like, what happened to Cheryl's ancestor that uh, was burned at the stake for being a witch, you know? But essentially... It all started because there were, well, it started with the twins. One of the twins was being drowned by La Llorona, well, Martha, but luckily Cheryl got there in time, and she didn't let Betty know ahead of time, but it's just like, you know... Well, she kind of made it clear what was happening, but Betty didn't think much of it. But it's like, yeah, that's kind of on um, Cheryl's side of things now. So, like, she's on that in that lane, the more supernatural, magical side of things. And so, she's kind of handling that. But there was a woman named, Lu uh, was it Luciana? Um, or Lucinia, uh, who, um, whose child... Uh, like 16 year old was drowned and killed and she's the only one that was in the house at the time so Betty had, is arresting her but Tony believes it's like no she loved her daughter too much to ever do that so she starts doing some research and she brings this up to this, uh, Betty but Betty doesn't believe it it's like no this is ghost stories it doesn't mean anything you know it's like right for the first time well maybe it's all I mean to be fair Riverdale well we're not in Riverdale we're in Rivervale uh, at the very least in Riverdale there were a lot of ghosts they just usually weren't manifesting themselves as real things they were just usually the past coming back to haunt Riverdale in some shape or form. But now in Riverdale, these very ghosts are very these ghosts are very real, and they've come to claim lives. And it, one of the lives that was taken was uh, Betty's child, because she was saying like if it was a boy, it was going to be named Archie. If it was a uh, girl, it's going to be named Polly. But the baby was taken from her, which Colonel's is kind of like oh like it could be one of those things that your body makes you think you're pregnant when in actuality you're not. It presents all the same signs, but you're not. But it's like, no, her baby was taken from her. There was a little bit of an Archie cameo this episode. Because he's, like, on the back of a uh, cart and it has O missing. I'm like, how are you going to say he's missing? I guess, like, not the entire town, but a good chunk of the town, or at least a lot of the main characters, know what happened to him. But I guess it's like, 
I guess we're still, not unless they're trying to say, like, this isn't necessarily the same continuity, because it's like, oh, so, well, because Cheryl was think her and her Nana Rose were thanking Archie, it's like, oh, yeah, like, oh, the Nectar's back and everything, so it's like, yeah, I guess, I guess to keep up public appearances to the outside world, it's just like, yeah, Archie Andrews is missing, and we're all so concerned about it, but it's like, yeah, funny how everyone's just able to move on after rit uh, ritualistically sacrificing him, but okay, um, but yeah, like, um, also, uh, well, once again, I, I like the almost like horror, like it's a very condensed, uh, horror movie because the entire episode isn't dead. It, like probably would have gotten even more time with it if the entire thing circulated around Tony, but it was bouncing between three, like it's bouncing into totality around three other stories. But, um, in the grand scheme of things, um, like that whole encounter at school, I thought was interesting. She was like, I know who you are. She presses the, um the fire escape and uh not the, the fire alarm and then she like smashes open the emergency thing and grabs the axe i'm like i'm surprised no one's calling you out for that but then kevin's like what are you doing tony and it's like yeah you look a little crazy just like with an axe in your hand and stuff like that but it seems like kevin might have been the one that called uh child protective services to kind of like check in but you know uh la llorona had come after baby anthony Baby Anthony was a target the entire time because when they look at the map, it's like, right, looking at the direction, it's like, yeah, it all connects back to Sweetwater. But they um, found out, like I said, Darla set this all in motion. She lost all her children. Danny was her last one. And it's like, sh uh, La Llorona, there's no stopping her until. Um, so I know, were, the, uh, were they. They weren't ghoulies before, last time we met them, were they? I think they were just criminals on their own i don't think where i can't remember i don't think they were with the ghoulies at it did that happen in the story when they joined the ghoulies or maybe that was in because did when the last time we saw them prior to the time skip i wonder was it prior to the time skip or was it after the time skip I, i'm blurring the lines or whether the last time we saw darla and her family i want to say that was prior to the time skip but i well, weren't they in that like the thanksgiving episode last season i want to think i don't remember I don't think they were ghoulies at that time. Well, whatever the case may be. But yeah, like, uh, La Llorona's got her mission and she's not gonna stop until she gets baby Anthony. So, um, Tony does apologize for what she did, but she can't take it back at this point in time. And uh, maybe if she had reached out to Darla beforehand, she could have stopped this. Maybe not. Like, you know, it's like, because even with a whole bunch of serpents protecting baby Anthony, La Llorona ran through them all. Like, we know Fangs was still alive, but who knows if everyone else had gotten drowned out or not. Because uh, that whole place was, like, soaking wet. Just everyone, you know, Fangs, like, was still alive. But when the time came, though, uh, Tony apologizing to Martha. Because it's like, right, she was innocent. Because, like, she was like, you know, my baby's innocent. But Martha was like, no one was innocent. It's like, you were. And I'm sorry for what happened to you. And you, but it's like, yeah, once I've been summoned, I can't back down. So, Tony decides, like, I'll become uh, La Llorona in your place. That way you can basically finally rest. And that way my baby gets to live. And so, Tony sacrifices herself, giving baby Anthony to, um... Betty to look after. It's like, take care of my baby. Let him know that uh, his mother loved him. Honestly, I, I thought that was actually super dope of a effect. I, I liked how that looked when, like, La Llorona fused with, um, with, uh, Tony, and you had that, like, water fit hitting her. I was like, oh, that actually looks super dope, like, special effects wise. I, I don't know why. I was like, oh, that looks sick. Uh, but it's like, yeah. Uh, and she returns to the water. I mean, very, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. Spoilers. Uh, will be coming, uh, the new, um, captain of the uh god i'm blanking on its name now the flying dutchman becoming the new flying dutchman yeah so it was kind of representative of that i'm like man that's super depressing that that worked out but you know i love the thing that i'm, I'm not you know ending this here or anything but just i love that the thing that joke says of like yeah like you know uh what better word describes mother than you know sacrifice and stuff like that what a mother is willing to do for their child you know I mean, the sad thing is, sooner or later, someone will summon Tony again. But I'm curious, like, will Tony be able to fight back against, like, what she's meant to do? You know, because as a mother, like, you know, her ch knowing her child is still out there. And hopefully that, you know, Riverdale as a whole, you know, not just Betty, but Riverdale as a whole will join together. It's like, that kind of sucks because 
Now Betty's got to look after, uh, you know, obviously Fangs is going to be there, but it's like, that's going to be pretty devastating. You know, it's like, I mean, to be fair, like, the last thing Betty had to remind her of Archie is going down too. So it's like, this episode kind of have blows all around. I mean, then we move into, like, everything with Tabitha and Jughead. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, like, last episode and now this. It's like, oh yeah, I was like, I found it funny. I was like, Jughead hasn't moved from that spot, even though he was supposed to put up those pictures and stuff, but he didn't. But they found, like, a secret room. Um, and Jughead wants to turn it into his little spot to write, which is interesting. Like, he put, like, a door in it for it. It's like, right, you couldn't put up the paintings, but you those pictures and everything, but you can make sure to take some time out to make a door for your little getaway, um, your little hidey hole to, like, you know, start writing. Because he's, like, trying to, like, it's like, yeah, everything's for my process because he starts, like working on putting like ships in bottles and stuff like that which is like where are you getting all these bottles are you drinking he's like no 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 no, i'm not drinking i'm just getting these and i'm like putting the ships in the bottle that like that's all that's going on here nothing like i'm not like drinking again or something like that you're like i hope not but uh tabitha's struggling because she's working so hard plus she's having nightmares about bashing his brains in because she ended up finding out something that jug had that lied to her about Oh, cool. So there was a murder-suicide before now because the previous couple, um, she killed her uh, husband or boyfriend and then killed herself. Um, that it was basically he was an artist that was so obsessed with his work. And you're like, hmm, seems like these parallels are repeating. Uh, kind of like a very, like, Amityville Horror almost um, aspect to it in summer. Well, I guess Amityville Horror or um, The Shining, I get like, uh, pick, uh, pick one, I guess, is kind of like the argument that could be made. But um, she actually talked to her um, grandpa, you know, uh, Pop Tate, about, um, about whether or not he believed in ghosts. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, like, there was a situation where, like, a waitress died here from a... Uh, uh, an accident here and he was like yeah it wasn't until like the riots in the 80s where she disappeared because basically all the windows got broken so he was like yeah ghosts are scared like if you make enough loud noise it will scare ghosts away which I'm like I've never heard that superstition wise of that being the means of getting rid of a ghost I'd never heard of that before so I thought that was interesting but uh, Jughead is typing he got the story right he's like oh man this is great oh, I've been like pouring my heart and soul into it I got this but then she's like oh I, I can't wait to read it he's like no nah, I never let anyone read my raw thoughts until Betty later on it's like yeah like Jughead let me read all his raw thoughts and it's like what oh cool another thing he's lied about and you're like well it is the Betty situation so that's still going that's always that even past all this that'll probably rear its ugly head because it's like prior to this betty was his longest lasting relationship and it left him with some uh emotional scars i think it kind of that relationship didn't work out and it kind of screwed both i think jughead and betty a little bit like i think they both have scars from that relationship that they're going to be carrying over into their future relationships i mean especially complicates things like even uh, even outside of all of this it's like right he's dating tabitha and yes yeah, she's dating archie but it got presented a little bit in the first episode of this season but it's still like yeah it's still gonna be a hard thing of like yo like your bro your best friend um is dating your ex plus it's also i mean yeah there's been years but there's always been this contentious contentious like thing between you and betty i mean that got resolved but still you know especially considering there's always been a betty and um archie thing ever since they were kids so before there was a a bet before it was uh bedhead um it was you know what do they have what is their ship name because i'm putting it together in my mind i'm like barchi i was like no betchy I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure there's like a canonical like the one that everyone kind of goes towards like a uh, avalanche type of situation. Uh, but regardless, um, aside from uh, that, before I went on that huge tangent, um, Tabitha finally like snapped on him. It's like, are you for real? You up here bringing all this alcohol here? Like, oh, you know, he's like, she's like, I'm the one that works all day and you just lay about and it's just like because it's like because she had gotten on him about the, leaving the cap off the toothpaste and apparently he included that in the story he's like no 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 this wasn't about us this was about them it's like yeah but why you used an, an, a real life argument that you had of course she that wasn't going to sit well but now it's like oh that's why you didn't want her to read the rough draft because you knew like oh like she'd be pretty upset she'd have every right to be but he's like no 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 this isn't about us but it's like yeah like oh the wife's not going to understand because she's not an artist like I am and it's just like yikes 
And then she's like, you're, oh, he's like, no, this alcohol, I'm going to do it for my ships and I'm just going to pour the alcohol out and just use the bottles. So he's like, oh, so you're going to spend my money that I work hard to make on that some alcohol you're just going to waste? And then she starts smashing stuff. I'm like, yo, I thought we were going to have a situation where she was going to accidentally throw something and accidentally kill Jughead or something. But she grabs a typewriter, smashes it, picks up the hammer, but then she looks in the, um... Uh, Mira and she sees it's not her and she's like I'm sorry you know we're stronger than this we made a promise that we'd kind of find a way through things and in that moment like you know she's like I, I love you and he's like wait did you just say I love you she's like I've been sitting wanting to say it for a while he's like me too and he's like I love you and you're like oh it's sweet after a very scary moment like that but then like the door closes as if a ghost left it's like right they made enough noise to scare away the ghost but also which I guess they, her choosing not to get to surrender herself to it so they close up the wall again and it's like right was that us or was that the ghost you know maybe a little bit of both but um you know that was their first real fight but you know every re relationships are you know you know a, a test of you know just you know you're, you're all when in a, your relationships are always going to be tested like how strong like will you find a way through something or will you let it you know, will things kind of dissolve? It's interesting because this thing kind of came up recently in something else I'm watching. I won't spoil it for anything. Uh, I won't spoil your said thing I'm watching. It's not like a big spoiler, but like a con complication came up in someone's relationship. I'll go ahead and talk about it. It's Ordinary Joe. So like, yeah, kind of a similar conversation came up uh, in one of the realities. I'm just kind of leaving it at that. But, uh... And uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. So that's why I'm like, their relationship ended up being the most like, okay, everything's good to some extent. Like, they, things worked out for them. Um, now, the other angle to this episode is Reggie and Veronica. And Reggie just seems like he is out of sorts. At first, I was like, oh, you think after Archie being dead and having Veronica all to yourself, no longer have to compare yourself to Archie. Even the fact is, I'm like, oh, that makes me feel a ways that you call him Regikins. I'm like, I guess it's your nickname for people. I'm like, ah, you always called him Archikins for so long. I just, I, I feel weird about that. It's like, man, don't, come, you know, come up with another cute way um, to refer to me. But it's like, you've always referred to Archie as Archikins. And I'm like, I mean, that's just a Veronica thing. But it's just like, I don't know. I'm sure that would rub me the wrong way. Um, just knowing that. Uh, but aside from all of that, like... Reggie's dealing with the fact is that his dad's sick, which is sucky because like for him it's like, man, I just got on good terms with my dad. We we kind of were able to kind of, we're on good solid ground, and now this is happening. So because of that, he's kind of spiraling a little bit, and he finds a car that matches Bella, and he's like, right, and he's spending all his time there reworking it. And even then, when he's in the car, like there's a beautiful woman beside him and everything, he's got caught up in this fantasy. And I was like, why are you keeping that from Veronica? Because like, Veronica at first was like, oh, I thought you were having an affair, but in actuality, it was him spending time for a car i because he was almost trying to recapture his youth because he's sitting in there like he had to tune up the car a little bit but he was also wearing his uh football jacket jersey jacket and it's like right the reason why it's because his dad giving him bella was like one of the greatest moments of his life and so he wanted to kind of go back to the good times rather than be focusing on the bad times but i mean they that's the stereotypical like like, oh man, you were the you were hot shit in high school and you want to relive your glory days. It's kind of the stereotype. To be fair, his circumstances are a little bit different. I mean, I think that's supposed to be, a, well, in his case, a quarter life crisis. Anyway, it's just kind of like life is up in the air. You're kind of spiraling a little bit. Things aren't going great. So you want to go back to a time that's good. I mean, he's not Al Bundying this. Like, Al's like in a whole other lane of delusional, of just being so. Wasn't it like, oh, the four times, like, the, wasn't it, wasn't it a whole bit with Al Bundy, like, he scored one, in one game, he scored four touchdowns, and that's all he ever, like, that's his greatest accomplishment in all of his life, that's all he ever focuses on. Not his wife, not his children, that. Um, or was it just in totality, he scored four touchdowns? I think it was one game, he, I can never remember, it's been a while since I watched uh, Mary with Children. But that, that, that's the point I was trying to make. So, it's, it's not that bad. But, um... Also, like, Reggie wants to, like, start making out in the car, and they do at front, in front of Pops, and then, like, her students see her, and she's like, oh, this is so embarrassing. It's like, yeah, 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 I think that's okay, but he's almost like, they're like, yo, yeah, and he's like, yeah, like, it's so weird that, but I guess it's like he was almost in that high school mentality at that moment, um, but then, like, 
um, Eromosa had suggested, like, right, he's going through this, so, like, just try to help him as best you can. Give him some fuzzy dice or something to kind of work his way through it. Just kind of support him in any way you can. But she finds the picture, and then it turns out, like, oh, she's like, oh, I'm confronting him. It's like, oh, he's having an affair. But then she runs into Weatherby, and Weatherby's like, oh, yeah, Isabella. And he's like, yeah, he knows her. She was a teacher there. Uh, she left uh, school because uh, there were uh, allegations of her uh, sleeping with students, and you're like, Jesus Christ, is this a Riverdale thing or was this teacher also at Riverdale? I'm like, if so, we had not that she was supposed to be like Riverdale's version of that. Like, maybe like, because I'm already blanking on her name. Um, She's the person, because I was about to say like first Archie and now now there's another teacher that was out here doing that. But it had to still be while Reggie was a student. So like, I think that's a Riverdale thing. And it's maybe in this universe, what happened with Archie and her like his his teacher never happened in this universe but this teacher with other maybe that's what that's supposed to mean so maybe it's kind of like a pair it's supposed to be a parallel universe so maybe that's supposed to be different like maybe this is one of those subtle things it's like oh this is a little different in this universe i mean granted because we know sadly we know what happened to uh was her name like miss grundy or something like that uh the teacher that archie was like sleeping with uh because we know like how betty's uh dad ended up killing her back in season was it season two? Yes. Yeah, season two. Uh, but tangents and all that aside, I thought that was... Uh, but I was like... If, either way, I'm like, man, this school, parallel universe or not, has a rampant issue with that, huh? Um, but aside from that, uh, and that made Veronica smash up his car because she's like, no, like... You might look back on that as a great time, but it was like, no, like, it's just you keeping this car is a reminder of her. It's a perpetuation of that abuse because you were abused. I'm like, because that's the thing, like, that's the stereotype of like, hi, like, we as high schoolers, you had that notion of like, dude, being with a teacher would be the coolest thing ever. And as an adult, you go like, oh, that's super messed up. You know, but it's like, it's the, it's the, it's the stereotypical fantasy of like, oh, you wanted to be a high schooler and having sex with your teacher. But it's like, no, that's super, super wrong. So Veronica was trying to help him out, but he was like, she never did anything to me. She was just the one adult I could trust. And now he also, like, not only did his car get smashed, he also found out his dad died 20 minutes ago. I'm like, Jesus, blow after blow. But she's like, right, I'm sorry. And she ended up getting him a new car, but it just wasn't the same. Like, it didn't fill that void. But he gets the car and everything. But the moment he gets in, uh, he opens a visor and the uh, photo drops. And it's like, I doubt... Veronica would put that back there. Maybe she did. Maybe she thought, like, right. Well, because the lady, there are allegations of her sleeping with the children. Uh, I mean, doesn't necessarily mean she did it. I mean, there's the whole thing with Martha. She was accused of what she was accused of, but she didn't actually do it. She was innocent. So it could be something there. But the fact is that I wonder, did Reggie lie about that? Because the moment, like, he gets the picture back, he sees her beside him. It's like, so he's, you know, so I guess... I guess because she was there. She was the one adult he could trust. And, like, now that he's lost, like, the only other person in his life, his dad, I guess, like, he's going to some comfort of who she, what she represented for him at a younger age. And he's holding on to that rather kind of being, focusing on her rather than actually being there with Veronica. Maybe because some of that um, aftermath of the Archie stuff is still, like, residual in their relationship. So, but, um... That's it's definitely going to be interesting to see things going forward. Bed, Betty and the whole baby Anthony thing because it does seem like potentially these are, like I said, not less they're being sly about like oh no it's a different story just something different happened to Archie. I'm like no I'm pretty sure it's supposed to still be the same. So these stories continue to be built off of each other. So we continue with Tabitha and uh, Jughead's relationship and that place being kind of cursed the way it is. Uh, I'm sure we're going to continue with this Veronica and Reggie thing, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see where all this takes us going forward to the next episode. I think I can pretty much just assume things, it's not going to have a happy ending. There might be some silver linings, but it's going to be depressing in some shape or form, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.